Proper identification of cane toads is essential because there are several species of native toads that closely resemble cane toads and we want to make sure that anybody who is considering euthanizing a cane toad does not accidentally euthanize a native species. So there are five species of native toads in Florida, but only three of those overlap in range with the cane toad in central Florida and I'll be focusing on those today. First of all though, uh, you need to know what makes a toad a toad. So a toad is just a specific type of frog. All toads are frogs, not all frogs are toads. And there's some features that toads have that you want to be able to remember so you can first make an assessment, do I have a toad versus a tree frog or another type of frog in, in, uh, in Florida. One is that toads have it, they're, they're stout and they're fat. They have a, a chunky body, they have short legs, uh, they also have dry, warty skin. Uh, I will say it's a fallacy that if a toad pees on you, you get warts. That is, that is not true. But they do have dry, warty skin. Uh, they're not very good climbers at all. Mainly you find toads on the ground. If you see a frog up on the wall or climbing up a tree, it's a tree frog. It's uh, not a toad, so that's another important feature. Uh, and then another thing is that uh, they have slight webbing on their rear feet, not really strongly webbed because they're a terrestrial species. And then most of our toads are going to be a brown or, or gray in color, and they might be mottled or spotted. So those are the general features uh, of a toad. Now it can be really difficult to distinguish among the species of toads in Florida when they're really small. All of them, when they metamorphose from a tadpole into a little toadlet, are about the size of a raisin, and it's almost impossible to confidently uh, distinguish one from the other. For example, a native southern toad toadlet looks very similar to an invasive introduced cane toad toadlet. And so a policy that you should adopt is if you find any toad under an inch long, you should just let it live. Don't worry about euthanizing it unless you get confirmation from an expert that you in fact have a, of a cane toad. All right, now in terms of identification, some things you need to keep in mind. Number one, range. It's important to keep in mind where the animal occurs in the state. If you're up in the panhandle of Florida, it's highly unlikely you're gonna find a cane toad because cane toads are limited to the peninsula, central Florida, and south. So you wanna look for range, first of all. Another thing is size. If you find a really big toad that just astounds you as it's with it because it's so big that's going to be a cane toad so size can be useful too and then finally you have these more subtle characters that you want to take into account that you almost need to have the toad in hand to be able to identify them properly and that's what we're gonna what we're gonna do now so first the cane toad uh, so again occurs in, in southern Florida only in the peninsula it inhabits a variety of human dominated habitats suburban neighborhoods golf courses ball fields, agricultural areas, really does not invade natural areas. So you got to keep that in mind as well. Size is an important identifying factor for cane toads, or it can be. Cane toads can grow as large as six inches. So if you find a really big toad, you've got a cane toad. Here's one that's about four and a half inches long. This is a pretty, pretty dark animal. There's gonna be individual variation. You have to keep that in mind when you're identifying toads, that one toad does not look the same as another. You can see some distinct differences in how these two toads look. The one in this hand has uh, modeling and spots on its back that are obvious, whereas this one does not. So they're individuals, just like no people look exactly, no two people look exactly alike. The same thing is true for toads, so appreciate that. So, both of these toads are, have the, the, those toad features, warty skin, plump body, relatively short legs. And this toad does not have any obvious markings on the back, but a cane toad may very well be lighter in color than this. It might have some lighter, almost creamy color blotches, or be like this animal, just be entirely dark. That all depends on the individual. Now some specific features that you want to keep in mind when identifying a cane toad. The first is the poison gland that occurs on the shoulder behind the eye. The poison gland is relatively large in a cane toad and it's roughly triangular shaped. All right? This is where all the ducks are that have that poison that the cane toads emit that could be lethal to your pet animal should it tangle with it. So an enlarged poison gland on each shoulder. Another thing you'll notice, there are no crests on the top of the cane toad's head. Its, its head has a little dip in it, but it does have this bony ridge that is over each eye, all right, and also runs down and goes over each nostril. So it's important to keep that in mind when you're identifying a cane toad. 
Another important feature with a cane toad is its call. During the, the spring and summer months after a, a warm uh, summer rain, you might hear the call of a cane toad and it sounds like a, a repeated warbling or vibrating sound. In the sound clip that you're hearing right now, the cane toad is the one making the sort of repeated over and over. There's also several species of native, native frogs in there. And if you know your frogs, you would recognize the southern toad, the trill of the, the, the native southern toad there, the green tree frog, as well as the eastern uh, narrowmouth toad. All right, so that, that's how to identify a cane toad. Next, we'll move on to one of our native toads, the southern toad, that looks a lot like a cane toad. So the southern toad occurs throughout the state of Florida in a variety of different habitats, both human dominated suburban neighborhoods, as well as natural areas. They are smaller than cane toads. This is a full grown animal, but they, get, they can get almost twice this size, but they don't, usually do not get over three inches. Notice this animal is a, sort of a reddish brown color. They can be gray, uh, uh, brown, red. They can even be brighter red than this. And they might have very prominent markings on their back. I'll show you another example to give you some idea of the individual variation. So this is an animal on my left hand is gray. The one there also has an obvious line down its back. Not all southern toads have this. Uh, it's very rare for that to occur in a cane toad. Also note, the poison gland in the native southern toad is relatively smaller compared to the body and it is oval shaped. It's not triangular. Another thing that's a really good feature is that once a southern toad reaches about an inch long, it develops these ridges or these crests on the top of the head that almost look like little horns. It does not have this bony ridge around the eyes and over the nose that the cane toad has. But again, I'll point out, these ridges do not become obvious until that toad gets about an inch or longer, which is why we want to establish the policy of not considering euthanasia for a toad smaller than an inch when you're in Florida. So the southern toad and the cane toad are the two that are most closely alike. So I want to point out again the features that distinguish these two toads. All right. That would be the first, the poison glands. The poison glands in the cane toad are relatively large and they're triangular shaped. The poison glands in the native southern toad are relatively smaller and they're oval or bean shaped. The cane toad also lacks cranial crests on the top of the head, whereas the southern toad has prominent crests or little horns on the top of its head after it reaches about an inch long. The cane toad also has a bony ridge over its eyes and around its nostril. And finally, cane toads are large animals, often exceeding three inches in length. Now I want to quickly point out two other toads, native toads, that you're unlikely to confuse with a cane toad, but I still want to make you aware of them. The first is the smallest native toad we have in Florida. That's the oak toad. I have one right here in my hand. You'll notice he doesn't have various obvious ridges. His poison glands are small. The main feature here is a thin little line down the back. Again, this is an adult animal. They can get about twice this big, but they're never longer than about an inch and a half. So you're unlikely to confuse this one with a cane toad. Oak toads you can find in natural areas, lots of different natural habitats, as well as suburban neighborhoods. And then finally, I want to point out the eastern spadefoot toad. It's a toad, even though it's not in the same taxonomic family, but it has all the toad features, which is why I'm pointing it out here. Occurs throughout the state, with the exception of the Everglades. The poison glands on this toad are very flattened. They're not raised and enlarged at all. It also does not have any crests or ridge on it, ridges on its head. And then frequently there's an hourglass shaped pattern on its back. All right. And then coloration varies from brownish to reddish brown. And usually there's a combination of uh, dark spots, dark models and, and smudges with lighter areas. And then finally it gets its name because of this prominent digging spade on the rear foot and that you can see right there. And that's how it digs into the ground. All right, so those are some helpful hints on identifying the invasive non-native cane toad, as well as hints on identifying native species so you don't confuse the native species with the cane toad. And again, remember, you want to have positive identification before you consider humane euthanasia of invasive cane toads. And if the toad is smaller than an inch, 
just let it live. Thank you for your interest in helping control this invasive species. For more information on invasive species in Florida, contact the UF IFAS Extension Office in your county.